I don't know who needs to hear this or what even this is, but I've been just experiencing some changes and I need to move some storage around on my phone and it's like the middle of the night so I have to go to bed so I'm not going to do the normal get ready with me style videos but we can call this like a get ready with me for bed because I just got out of the shower I'm going to throw some clothes in the washer and then I'm going to go to bed after I finish recording this so technically you're getting ready with me it's just a little girl chat moment and we're gonna go deep I recently reached a new level of being done with this man like so done I blocked him across social media like just so done just like just like next level done and it's not like I woke up and felt done it's just like something has changed within me something is not the same I'm through with playing by the rules of someone else's game (laughs) I'm just kidding. Those are lyrics from um, Wicked, the musical. But seriously, something has changed within me. And it's been a change that's been going on for a very long time. But the most relevant and important part is that I have just been feeling like I don't have time for bullshit and you're going to have to listen to this and you're going to have to feel me more than you hear me because there's a lot of things online where women will talk about a certain thing or women will say a certain thing to sound tough, to sound like they have self-worth, to, you know, portray a specific image. And I don't really care about that at all. I don't think it's relevant. I don't think it's helpful. Me not having time for bullshit is not me being like, fuck men, I'm over them and all of that stuff. It's different. And it's deeper and it's meaningful. Give me one second. Okay. I had to cut my light off and just change things around a little bit. So... There's a meditation that I have and it's inside of my successful safe and secure meditation album, which I will have linked in the description if you want to check it out and purchase it. And I've been doing that meditation for, you know, months now. Well, it's been out for a year, but I recently started doing it within these last couple of months, really focusing on doing that meditation again and again because it just feels so good and it's so amazing. And the more that you do this meditation, you're seeing the successful version of yourself. And the more that you do this meditation, you are becoming that version of yourself. You're embodying that energy. You are collapsing time. And it's like something changed within me that I didn't even I didn't even realize that it had changed until I felt like I was a new person where I started saying I don't have time for this I don't have time for this bullshit I started talking about being connected to and guided by the God inside of me which these are phrases that I'm using inside of the meditation 
And they're not phrases that I usually would say. But as I embody this version of myself and I become this version of myself more and more, I start thinking, I don't have time for this bullshit. I'm becoming the version of myself who doesn't have time for bullshit. And I really have to explain what that means. I've been realizing more and more that there are things in the world that are worth fighting for. There are things in the world that are worth fighting for. Justice, healing, empowering women, uplifting women, uplifting human beings, freeing my people. These are things that are worth fighting for. Building my business. These are things that are worth fighting for. That means when there's a difficulty I'm going to fight to fix it. I'm not going to give up. I am all in. And when you realize how powerful your focus is, because you're the creator of your reality, and you also realize how limited your focus is, because your energy is limited, and you only have so much time in a day, It's like the way that I value things has changed. The way that I value my time has changed. The way that I value my energy and my focus has changed. What am I giving my thoughts to? What am I giving my focus to? What am I paying attention to? What am I feeding into? And as I look around at the shit that's happening all across the world, all across my country. I look at the people who are in pain. I look at the people who are suffering. I look at the people who need help. I look at the people who need upliftment and healing. There's so much work to be done across the world. And then I think about an interpersonal relationship. And I think about a man who doesn't communicate at all. I think about a man who doesn't communicate how he feels or what he wants. I think about a man who hides away. I think about a man who hides himself. I think about a man and I think... It's like I've been doing my pick a card readings and we're doing a lot of tapping into the energy of your soulmate and what's your life together and how are they going to lead and I'm like fucking myself up with this because I'm tapping into all these energies. I'm like, hold on. I want to know what that's like. I'm trying to see what that's like. I'm trying to get like you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm tapping into these energies and as I tap into these energies and as I go outside in the world and I attract amazing experiences with men, it's like all of the good experience that I ha- experiences that I have with men, it's like every single time I have a positive interaction with men, it makes this guy look worse. It's hard to keep you around, brother. You know what I'm saying? At some point, for me, in connections, I'm not the girl who a lot of women portray themselves to be. Maybe they are that fucking robotic. I don't know. I don't really care. I'm not the girl who, when a man does one thing, I am completely done and completely over. That's just not who I am. That's not who I want to be. I am a lover and a dreamer and a fantasizer and a psychic. I'm somebody who believes in the potential of things and believes in the potential of what could be. And that has powerfully supported me in my business. That powerfully supports me in being the leader of my mind and the leader of my reality. And there's nothing negative about that. But at some point, what I've observed with 
these soulmate relationships that I have attracted is that at some point the level of disrespect outweighs the feeling of attraction. Where at some point these men just make themselves repulsive to you with their behavior, with their action, with their inaction. So I'm never the type of person to tell a woman to leave a man or blah, blah, blah. You know, I might have been years ago, but today, more recently, that's not who I am. Because number one, it's not my job. Number two, it's not my responsibility. Number three, I really don't give a fuck. You're going to live your life. You're going to create your reality. And until you're ready to heal it, it's going to keep, you know, happening, whether it's this guy or the next guy. So who really gives a fuck? Live out the stories that you're telling. And when you're ready to heal it and you're ready to shift it, I've got a course that's going to change your fucking life. You know what I'm saying? There's healing that's available to you when you're ready for it. God is available to you. When you're ready to end the fucking cycle, you will. Until then, have fun. Like, that's it. And that's how I live. That's how I do relationships. I spent years in this connection, this like intangible connection with this man going back and forth with myself and I healed so much and it's the same thing that happened in the connection that I had before where when you stop fighting and beating yourself up and trying to focus on what is the right thing to do should I feel this way should I still want this person blah 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 and you just fucking lean into it it's like a feeling an emotion whatever you resist persists so when you're beating yourself up and you're fighting against how you feel and you're fighting against what you desire it's like you make it worse so I don't do that I honor how I feel I honor what I want. I honor what I think. I honor what I desire. I accept it. I dive into it fully and wholeheartedly. And then when it's not what I want, when it's not what I desire, when the disrespect is greater than my attraction, oh, then I'm over it. I'm done. The situation is dead and it's never coming back. And so... As I've been having these amazing experiences with men over the past several months, men who take care of me, men who show up emotionally, men who offer me emotional intimacy, men who apologize to me immediately, men who don't let me go to bed upset, men who open doors for me, prioritize opening doors for me and communicate to me that I look beautiful today men who let me go in front of them at line in the store, men who, you know, don't charge me full prices when I go places. I experience men who lead. I experience men who take care of me. And I'm getting into the energy of these amazing men and these amazing relationships when I'm doing the pick a card readings and... It just really hit me. Like when I think about this guy, I don't see him as a leader. I don't see him as a leader at all. I see him as weak. And I don't have time. And I know that there's jokes on the internet. I don't see him as incapable. I see him as a coward who's unwilling to do the work, plain and simple. And that's none of my business. And that's been none of my business for the entirety of this connection. It was his healing was never any of my business. And that's something that's very different about this connection than the last connection. The connection before that, it was, oh my God, he has to heal this and he has to heal this and his inner child and da 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 da. And this connection, it's never been that. It's always been like this behavior that you're exhibiting, you don't lost your mind. Now you call me when you find it, you know? It's always been like if he wants to show up, if he wants to apologize, I'm here and I'm open and, you know, I'm available for the apology. 
it's always been that. So that's different and that's something that I would consider to be an improvement. But, you know, there's no judgment for anywhere that I've been. But I think about this man and when I think about him, I don't see a leader. I don't see a man who will take care of me and support me and make me feel safe. And it's like in some ways, could I see him doing that? Yes. Is it enough? No. Not even close. I'm late. I'm late for my wedding. I'm late. That's how I feel. I'm late. I don't have time. I'm late. And no, we're not we're not yet at the whole. What does it mean to not have time for bullshit? But one aspect of it is I don't have time. I'm late. You're going to come into my life. You're going to be serious. You're going to be intentional. You're going to give me princess treatment. You're going to bring value into my life as a man or you're not going to be allowed in it. And when I say that you're not going to be allowed in my life, I mean, you're not going to be allowed in my mind. You're not going to be allowed in my focus. You're not going to be allowed in my anything. I can't do it anymore. I don't have time. I have children to have. I have a family to have and I have a community to serve. And the man who's going to be my husband, my soulmate, you have to be a leader and I don't see him as a leader. I don't see him as a leader. To be my soulmate, you have to be a leader. Why? Because I'm a leader. I don't do mediocre in my business. I don't do mediocre in my content. I don't do mediocre in my courses. I don't do mediocre in my programs. I don't do mediocre in my offerings. I don't do mediocre. I do zone of genius level type shit. I do growing and expanding type shit. I do, I'm here to change the fucking world and free my people type shit. I don't have time for mediocre. I don't have time for the man that avoids his emotions. I don't have time. I need to be with a man who is a grown up. I don't have time for toddlers and grown men bodies anymore. I can't do it. I can't do it another day of my life. You've been listening to me maybe on my podcast, maybe in my get ready, other get ready with me videos, maybe in my fucking readings. I don't remember when I've talked about this, but I've been learning more about just my family history and my family experiences. And my great grandmother was born basically 100 years before me, like to the fucking day, to the fucking day. In my family lineage, I can trace back at least 100 years of women not being respected and cherished and loved and uplifted by their partners. I can trace back 100 years of men who are not loyal. Of men who are not loyal 100 years. I've been really fucking thinking about that shit. That shit really fucked me up 100 years. You can't have me. This story can't have me. Not another day. Not another second of another day. No. I don't have time. That's what I mean when I say that I don't have time. How many hundreds of years? How many women and how many stories that I don't know? How many experiences that I don't know? How much pain? How much suffering? How much betrayal? How much disrespect? How much being undermined and undersupported? That I don't know. 
This story can't have me. I am the generational curse breaker of my family line. I am the generational wealth builder of my family line. And being the generational wealth builder of my family line is not about money. It's about happiness. It's about freedom. It's about alignment with our souls. It's about alignment with source energy. It's about healthy relationships. It's about fulfilling relationships. And to me, that means loyalty. To me, that means honesty. To me, that means openness. To me, that means direct communication. To me, that means next level ease. I don't have time. 100 years, women have been born and they have died. In my family, my people, my blood, my DNA, women have been born and women have died being mistreated by men, being unsupported by men. And I think about the women of the world. I think about the women of the world. There are women across the world today who are not allowed to speak in public. There are women across the world today who are not allowed to go to college. There are women across the world who do not have the right to share their gifts. I left college. That was my choice. If I ever wanted a degree, I could go back and it would be incredibly easy for me. I chose to pursue my business. I chose to pursue my dream. And I show up every single day giving everything that I have to my dream, to my passion, to my purpose, to my business. There are women who do not have that fucking privilege. I don't have time for bullshit. Because I have to rise up. And I have to rise other women up alongside me. And we have to rise up together as a community. And as we ascend the corporate ladders. And as we ascend financially. As we grow and expand and ascend in the tax brackets. We can put our money in the right places. And as we grow and expand and ascend politically. And we get into those rooms. And we are in those positions of power. We have the opportunity to make a real difference in the lives of women. I've been thinking a lot about injustice these past couple of weeks, months. I've been thinking a lot about injustice. And earlier today, I was doing, I just felt so led to do research into New Orleans and what happened during Hurricane Katrina and how devastating it was not just the natural disaster but the social disaster the racist disaster the just blatant disrespect do you know that there are people in Hurricane Katrina that were given mobile homes and the mobile homes were so cheap the government officials who signed off to purchase these mobile homes were able to get them so cheap because they had such high deadly toxic amounts of formaldehyde black families that were knowingly put in danger by people in positions of power that they trusted to take care of them that they needed to rely on them and the consequences that that has on these people's mental, emotional, physical, psychological and spiritual health and well-being I have to rise up because there are women in politics who need my help and they need to see who I am and they need to know who I am and I have to be confident in who I am and what I can do and how I can serve them because if there was a black woman, if there was a black woman who had the power of creating and holding a vision, 
for safety and security if there was a black woman who believed in her power to attract and to allow money to flow through to her and she was in that position of power then those mobile homes would have never been purchased and those people who had already been traumatized and displaced would have never been hurt in such a terrible horrible way completely preventable way looking at videos and I cried earlier and I'm crying now because it breaks my motherfucking heart. I don't have time. I'm looking at all of the things that are going on in the world, all of the pain that is going on in the world, everything that has gone on in the world. It's not going to stop until I rise up. It's not going to stop until women rise up. It's not going to stop until people who have good hearts like me. It's not going to stop until people who have integrity like me are in those positions of power. It's not going to stop until people who are good hearted like me. It's not going to stop until people who have integrity like me are able to allow money to flow powerfully through them. so that they can serve, so that they can give, so that they can create change, so that they can create safety and security. There was a video of this couple in New Orleans, Hurricane Katrina. It was this white couple And I feel like this man's smile and face is like burned inside of my brain. And they're talking about how basically they have a right to defend themselves and they are using guns to stop people who are looting and, you know, we're shooting them because they're looting And this man has the most sick, sadistic smile on his face as he's talking about shooting to kill and harm unarmed black people. And then the movie, documentary, whatever, cut to a black man who was like, I'm walking down the street. They come to me. They put a gun on me. They tell me, what am I doing here? I tell them, I live right around the corner. I'm from here. I live here. This is my home. I belong here. And this man in this documentary, I don't know when the documentary was filmed, but he started crying and you could tell that There is a feeling of embarrassment or a feeling of shame. And it's just like, of all of the things in the world for you to feel embarrassed and ashamed of, somebody taking the moment that there is a a natural disaster to abuse you and to hurt you. There are so many terrible, terrible things that happened. And the consequences of that, the consequences of these experiences and these stories that we are telling as a consequence of them, these stories that we pass down to our children, these negative consequences of this bullshit is greater than I can imagine. And you have this man and this woman and they just are talking as if They're doing absolutely nothing fucking wrong. It is their right. They're doing a good thing. You can't come into a white woman's home and tell her that you're going to take her home over. Yeah, because that fucking happened. Be serious. There was a deadly police shooting during the Hurricane Katrina displacement and all of this stuff and it got covered up and just all of this fucking craziness 
Imagine the stories, the experiences, the things that we don't know, the things that people lived that we will never see, that people will never talk about, the experiences, the creative ideas, the talents, the gifts, the capacity to heal, the capacity to bring love and light into the world that got washed away during that time and we will never know. And this is like in 2005, and I was like six years old. So like, you know, I really couldn't do anything about it then. And I didn't really understand what was going on, of course. But this is devastating. I show up every single day. I connect to my passion. I connect to my purpose. I work hard in my business. Because I have to be the woman with the money and the solutions and the connections and the everything because I will not live on a world where this shit is normal, where this shit, ex- this shit is accepted, where this shit is just life. Absolutely not. So I don't have time When I think about the pain that my people have gone through. When I think about the trauma that my people are still going through. When I think about the people who need support now. And then I think about a relationship, a connection with a man who doesn't communicate how he feels. Is this really worth your time? Is this really worth your effort? Is this really worth your energy? Is this really worth your focus? When people need you to rise up, when people need you to elevate, and it's not that you can't focus on love, and it's not that you can't focus on relationships. Of course you can. Of course you get to have it all. Of course I get to have it all. Of course I'm manifesting it all. That's obvious. But when it comes to relationships, this is not something that I have availability for difficulty around. I am healing chronic illness. I am healing my relationship with money. I'm creating financial stability, safety, security, and wealth for myself. I am building a business and a brand. I am branching out and I am serving in an even greater capacity than I ever have before. There's so much to do. There's so much to do. I'm focusing on a man who doesn't show up. It just doesn't, it doesn't make the cut. It doesn't make the top five of the shit that I have to do, of the shit that I have to focus on, on the shit that I have to move, on the shit that I have to change. Take a look around at the world. I don't have time. I need a grown man who gets it. I need a grown man who gets it. Of all of the troubles and all of the difficulties of all of the pain in the world, my relationship should not be a source of that. My relationship should not be an experience of that. My relationship should be giving me hope. My relationship should be giving me life. My relationship should be giving me love. My relationship should be giving me something to fight for. I know that love exists. I know that there's good things that are available to me in the world because I have this amazing wonderful man by my side and together we are changing the world there's a greater vision at play there's more things to take into consideration I 
I'm no longer the woman. I can't be the woman. I can't keep thinking. In that compartmentalized way. Because it's not just my relationship. It's not just my soulmate connection. It's not just this and this and this, you know? It's everything. It impacts everything. And I'm sitting here spending my time going back and forth with myself. Is this right? Is this wrong? Should I let this go? Should I manifest this person? Da 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 da. And it's just like, honestly, with my limited time, energy, and focus with all of the things that need to be changed and shifted in the world, the mental and emotional energy that it's going to take for me to change my mind, to see this man as a leader instead of a coward, that's not worth it. That's not worth it. I don't have time. And a part of me wants to say that I wish that I did. Because it sounds romantic and poetic and beautiful if I were to say that. But I don't. But I don't. You want to be my man? You want to be my guy? You want to be my lover? You have to be a fucking leader. Because like I'm a leader for black women and black children. And of course I obviously inspire and lead black men as well. But you have to be a leader for black men. You understand that you you have to be that. And there's a lot of men, we've talked about this. There's a lot of fake ass leaders out there. You got a degree. You've got a decent job. You think that just because you show up and put yourself in front of young black boys that you are leading them, that you are helping them, that you are serving them, that you are freeing them? No, no. Poor black kids who are growing up in shitty fucking schools are surrounded by motherfuckers with degrees. They're surrounded by motherfuckers with degrees. If being around people with degrees is what got black and brown kids out of the hood, then just going to school would be enough. Just showing the fuck up and having a goddamn degree does not make you shit. It doesn't make you shit. I'm tired of pretending like it does. I'm tired of being willing to entertain the idea and the thought that it does. Having a fucking man-made badge, a man-made title does not make you a fucking leader. A leader is something that you are. A leader is something that's in your heart. A leader is something that's in your fucking soul. A leader is who you are when you are in a dark room and there is nobody else in there and it is just you and God and the devil. That is what the fuck separates a leader from a coward. A leader is who you are when the cameras are turned off. A leader is in you. A leader, being a leader is in your fucking DNA. You want to be my man? You want to be my fucking guy? You have to actually be a fucking leader for black men. You think you're leading black men and you're emotionally fucking stunted? You think you're leading black men and you don't know how to feel and express your fucking emotions? You think you're leading black men? And you don't know how to love a woman. You don't know how to show up for a woman. You don't know how to move through your shit. You don't know how to face your fears in relationships. You don't have it. You're not a fucking leader. I 
I need a leader. I need a man who is going to lead, not because I am a woman who is clueless and a woman who cannot make choices and decisions for herself. I need a man who is a leader who is going to lead because I'm a woman in leadership. I need a man who can lead my sons. I need a man who is a leader amongst men, period. And the degree and the job, the money, the blah, 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 none of that shit makes you a fucking leader. I am ready. I am ready. I am ready. I am ready for the man who is a leader in his mind, his body, and his soul, for a man who has integrity in that, for a man who shows up, for a man who is able to take a look around at the things that are going on in the world and is able to understand that there are some things that are worth fighting for and there are some things that are worth letting go. As a man who's a leader, you see your ego out of control in your fucking relationships. You see yourself creating suffering for yourself and other women in your life. And you're just okay with that? You're just okay living like that? You're just okay having that relationship dynamic? You're not doing everything in your power to change that, to shift that, to alter that? You're not a leader. You're not a leader. That's not leadership. That's cowardice. When I have a man, when I am married, when I have my soulmate, that has to be a man who I am so deeply and incredibly proud of who he is on a soul level, who he is on a physical level, who he is mind, body, and soul. I need a man who shows up. I am ready for the man who shows up. I had a dream last night of my future spouse. I didn't really see his face. But I just had a dream of him and we were holding hands. And it was so beautiful and so amazing. I need a man who shows up. I attract the man who shows up. I attract my soulmate and I don't have time for anything else. You come into my life, you either shit or get off the pot. And it actually was a relationship with a woman, not a romantic one, but a relationship with a woman who really brought this home to me. Really quick, 2.5. I had reached out to her to build a friendship with her and possibly do a collaboration down the line. But we need to build a friendship first. I'd commented on one of her YouTube videos. She told me to hit her up on Instagram. I literally commented, let's hop on a call. Let's connect. She tells me to hit her up on Instagram. So we go back and forth on Instagram. We make a plan. Okay, we're going to meet at Monday, 10 a.m., whatever. And then it's, I tell her, okay, I'm going to send you the Zoom link. A couple minutes before our scheduled meeting, I send her the Zoom link. She doesn't respond. 36 minutes after our scheduled time, she responds, Hey, Nat, which really annoyed me. Because first of all, you just no called, no showed. Now you're calling me a nickname. We're not that close. And sometimes, you know, my people on social media, if I call myself Matthews, whatever, people can call me that. But in a personal relationship, in a business relationship, you don't fucking call me Nat if we are not close. We don't have a relationship. I don't know you like that. And you really just pissed me off. So it's a hard no. So 
she says, hey, Nat, I got caught up at a lash appointment. I didn't hear back from you, so I got caught up at a lash appointment, which was fucking ridiculous. Because we already agreed to the plans. And if you were questioning whether or not I was going to send you a Zoom link and we were going to meet, then you could have sent a fucking message. a communicated like a goddamn adult. And you could have said, hey, just double checking, you're going to send me the link. And I would have said, oh yeah, I was going to send it right before our call. And that would have got cleared up or I would have sent it right then and there. But instead, you chose to miss a business meeting. So she misses the meeting. I'm still being way too nice. I'm like, whatever, miscommunications happen. It's Mercury retrograde. Do you want to reschedule? Do you want to hop on the call now? She's like, let's reschedule it. And actually, if you want to hop on a call, we can just record a podcast style episode for both of our channels bitch you're out of your fucking mind you're out of your fucking mind first of all if I agree to schedule another meeting with you I'm only 50% expecting you to show the fuck up because you just no called no showed wasting my motherfucking time on a Monday goddamn afternoon Now you want to jump into business and I don't even know you. I don't know your ideal client. I don't know your business goals. I don't know your mission statement. I don't know what the fuck you're doing in your business. Hell motherfucking no. You can't touch my audience. What the fuck? That's crazy. That's literally insane. So I send a message and I set my boundary and I go, hey, Although I'm open to discussing a collaboration in the future, I would rather build a friendship first. Mind you, she asked me earlier, before we even scheduled the call, what do I want to talk about? Oh, I just want to hang out, get to know each other. So it's not a fucking surprise. You already agreed. Now, after you missed the call, now you want to connect and collaborate together. We're absolutely not doing that. And so I say again, let me know if you want to reschedule a call to hang out as friends or whatever. If you're interested in that, let me know. She sends back a message. She says, let's put a pin in it, exclamation mark. She really was very close to getting cussed the fuck out because I don't do that passive aggressive corporate speak. That's not who I am. That's not who I've ever been. I will cuss you the fuck out. I don't play nice. I don't do passive aggressive. I just do aggressive. And that shit really pissed me off. And so she says, let's put a pin in the meeting. And I responded back immediately. And I said, you know what? Forget that I asked. I wish you the best. And then I unfollowed her and had her unfollow me. And now I hope that I'd never see the bitch again. Because I strongly dislike her and her entire demeanor and how she handled that situation. That was a fuck no for me incredibly disrespectful, incredibly unprofessional. And that's a woman who talks on her YouTube channel of, I'm building my motivational speaking business. That's not how you fucking do business, bitch. Whatever. So I had that experience and then it made me think. Because if you have that negative experience with that woman and you know immediately that you want her to get the fuck out of your life and never come back. How could you have this negative experience with this man and still be open to a connection with him? And y'all know me. If I'm going to call you out on your bullshit, I'm going to call myself out on my bullshit because that's just how we do. And that's just integrity. So it was kind of like an open-ended thing where it was just like, I don't even know how to respond to the thought that just popped up in my head because you're telling the truth. Like, that's so real. Why are we willing to accept an apology from this man that has not come 
If the apology had come immediately, I am open to repair in relationships. The apology did not come immediately. His behavior is absolutely fucked. Why are we still open to this? And so that was just like an idea that just kind of marinated and then kind of grew. And then everything else that's just coming together for me and everything else that I'm seeing in all of these different ways and everything else that I'm feeling, everything else that I know to be true. I don't have time. I don't have time for little girls who are pretending to be grown women boss bitches who don't show up to meetings, who don't communicate, who act like their shit doesn't fucking stink when an opportunity to connect with me is obviously fucking lucrative for a million and one reasons that we don't even need to go down the fucking list. Weird, wish-washy fucking behavior. Bitch, you're done. You're out of here. I don't have time for that in my business because my business is not my baby. My business is a masculine energy that supports me, but also my business is my baby. You know what I'm saying? This is my responsibility. I take this shit seriously. I respect this shit. I love this shit with me and with my relationships and my romance how am I having an experience where I for even a second am entertaining some shit that if a woman if a friend did what he did I would have been let that shit go Which, you know, take that with a grain of salt because I have grown so much over the years and I did tolerate disrespect and let people come back and da 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 da. But you know what I'm saying? Where I am today, who I am today, how I feel today, how I behave today. And the choice and decision to let the connection go is not coming because I have to look a certain way or because I should do a certain thing. It's just me really. Just figuring out what I want. I'm tired of the same old shit. At some point, you get tired of the same old shit. At some point, you get tired of the man that doesn't show up. At some point, you get tired of the man that's not committed to growth and expansion. At some point, you get tired of men's cowardly bullshit. I'm not for it. Especially not when I go fucking crazy for my shit. I go crazy for my business. I go crazy for my mindset. I go crazy for my health. I go crazy for my relationships. I go crazy for my romance. I go crazy for my future children. I go crazy for the dream that I have for my future. I show up every single day. I am so fucking dedicated. You come to me and you do not have devotion. You're not making the fucking cut, period. I'm not doing it anymore. I don't have time for it anymore. For my great grandmother who died. Died. Which like, I mean, it's very common for great grandmothers to be dead. But like, my great grandmother who died. Not knowing what it's like to be loved and cherished by a man. Not knowing what it's like to be respected by a man, my grandmother who died. Not knowing what it's like to truly be loved and respected and cherished and supported by a man. And I love my grandpa. And I've been having to do my own forgiving and releasing and, you know, the men in my family and my lineage and how I can have a good and perception of them and they also can be flawed human beings who you know created negativity and like oh it's so fucking emotionally complex but just from my grandma's perspective 
and the consequences of my grandfather's actions and how his sons grew up to treat women, to perceive women, to behave around women. He dropped the ball in that regard. He was a good grandpa to me. There were so many mistakes and the way that he treated my grandmother was one of them. Too many women, too close in my, like too close in generations to me have been hurt, disrespected not loved properly, not not shown up for, not protected, not contained, not supported. Like, I have so much privilege. I have so much privilege. And I will not waste it. I have so much privilege. I have the privilege to have this platform. I have the privilege to grow and build this business and not have to work minimum wage at the same time. I have so much privilege. I have the privilege of being able to go after my dreams. I have the privilege of being able to creatively express myself. So many women don't have that. So many women and young girls don't have that. How dare I ever live a life after what my ancestors went through? How dare I ever live a life where I take that privilege for granted? I have the privilege of knowing how to heal my relationship with men. I have the privilege of knowing how to connect with God. I have the privilege of knowing the laws of attraction and assumption. I have the privilege of knowing how to heal. I have the privilege of knowing how to change my mind. I have the privilege of knowing how to build out supportive belief systems. I have the privilege of knowing how to change my own motherfucking life how could I ever betray those women and disgrace those women by not fighting for a higher love how could I ever disgrace those women by not showing up and fighting for my fucking dreams. I have so much privilege. And I honor my privilege and I leverage the fuck out of my privilege. And I work every single motherfucking day. You want to be my future husband? You need to be a man who shows up and works every single motherfucking day. I'm done. And there's a sex in the city. I know that Carrie and Mr. Big end up married to each other. So like fucking ignore that part. But there's a scene that like is like cycled on Twitter all of the fucking time. And it's just like, um... Long story short, this whole thing fucking happens with Big and his wife, but he's having an affair with Carrie, blah, 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 blah. And then the wife chases Carrie down the stairs. The wife falls, hits her head, breaks her fucking nose. Then Carrie takes the wife to the hospital. She's there in the waiting room. Big comes to the waiting room and is like, oh my God, is she okay? And Carrie's like, this is this and there's a plastic surgeon and blah, blah. And then Big is like, so I'll call you. And Carrie turns around and she's like, no, you won't fucking call me. We are so over. We are so over that we need a new word for over and that's how I feel 
I feel like that cycle of life, that cycle of relationships, that cycle of connections, it is so over. It is so fucking over that we need a new word for over. It doesn't exist to me anymore. It doesn't get to exist in my mind. It doesn't get to exist because I don't have time. I have men, I have a man to fall in love with. I have children to give birth to. I am ready. I am ready, I am ready, I am ready, I am ready, I am ready. I am fucking ready. I am ready, I am ready, I am ready. I am ready, I am ready, I am ready, I am ready, I am ready. My health gets better every single day. I am ready, I am ready, I am ready, I am ready. I am ready for motherhood. I am ready. I don't have time. Everything else is over. Emotionally immature bullshit is over. I don't know how you feel. I don't know how we stand, where we stand. Da, 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 da. It's over. It's over. We don't. We don't. We don't stand. We're not anything. We don't exist. There is no us. There, There is no nothing. There was no nothing. Let it go. And I don't actually mean that there was never anything because you know me you know my emotions you know my feelings i honor myself and i honor how i feel and i honor my psychic gifts and i honor what i receive and i honor the readings that i do for myself or you know the readings that i do from other people and there are so many beautiful things that happen in this connection with this man and i am grateful for it in so many ways and still it is so over that we need a new fucking word for over It is so over that we need a new fucking word for over. A man does not get to take up any aspect of my focus. Unless he is coming into my life consistently showing up all mother fucking in. Until the man who comes into my life is showing up consistently motherfucking in we have nothing in consistency we have nothing you don't communicate how you feel and what's alive within you we have nothing like i'm i'm bored of talking about it it's over it's done we don't even need to discuss it anymore i won't bring it up again that's how over it i am i'm not angry I don't want to fight I don't want to cuss and scream and all of that stuff I don't even feel negatively towards the man I hope maybe he heals one day I honestly really don't give a shit what he does or what he doesn't do I really don't I really feel indifferent I really feel indifferent and it's not something that I forced myself to feel and it's not something that I wanted to feel it's like something that fucking happened One day I opened up my YouTube and I'm scrolling through and I'm seeing the different readings or the different pick of cards and I'm like, I can't even listen to this all the way through. I don't even want to hear this. I don't even want to focus on this. I don't even want to get into this. I don't even give a fuck about this. I don't even give a shit about this. Like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I want to talk about my soulmate. I want to talk about the one. I want to talk about the man that knows. I want to talk about the man that knows that there is so much things in the world that need his mother fucking help. There are so many things in the world that need his support. There are so many things in the world that need his love. There are so many people in the world that are going to be served by us coming together, by us being together, by us serving together. I need a man who's sees his relationship with me as an opportunity to serve in a higher and greater and deeper capacity because that's that's my fucking highest soulmate relationship that's my greatest fucking dream okay I need a man who shares that vision I need a man who gets it I need a man who's grown because you get to a certain point where you don't have time I look at all of the negative things that happen in the world. I look at all of the pain. I look at all of the shit that's going on. And the insecurities, they are they become so fucking small. 
I don't have time to be afraid that nobody wants what I have to offer. I don't have time to even entertain the thought that people can't afford my offers. I don't have time to afford. I don't have time to focus on the shit that used to scare me. I don't have, I don't have time for fear. I sit in my room and I pray and I pray over myself and I speak life into myself and I speak prosperity into myself and I command doubt to leave my body. I command doubt to leave my energy field. I command doubt to leave my home. I command fear to leave me now because I don't have time. I cast my insecurities out of my body because I'm so fucking done. I don't have time. I don't have time to be insecure about my body. I don't have time to be insecure about my flaws. I don't have time to entertain the thought that I'm not worthy of love. Look at all the shit that is going on in the motherfucking world and wake up. I don't have time. I don't have time. My people need me. My future children need me. I don't have time. And I think everything else is bullshit. In this next level, in this next level of being, you want to hang around me. You want to be around me. You need to be about that life. You need to be all in. You need to be committed. You want to be my friend. You want to be my homegirl. You need to be a woman who gets the fuck up and goes after her dreams. And if that's not you, we can't hang out. I don't have time. I'm not available. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I'm done. I'm done. There are women who the way that they dress is controlled. There are women I've seen such horrible fucking videos of things that I will not describe. Things that I don't even fucking watch. Like, how did this get on my goddamn (laughs) timeline? I have the privilege of walking outside of my house and knowing that 9 out of 10 men that I see are good-hearted men that are safe and secure. That's a fucking privilege. I have the privilege that I live in a home where I am not afraid of a man hurting me. I know what it's like to live in a home with men that are dangerous and unsafe. I know what it's like to go to sleep with men who are dangerous and unsafe. I have the fucking privilege of being in a place that's safe where I can create healing for myself and I have to rise up because women are not healed by pretty fucking words. Women are not healed by women who look like they're good leaders. Women are not healed by women who look like they have a big following, by women who look like they have a whole bunch of likes, by women who look like they have a whole bunch of fucking success. There's enough fake ass spiritual bitches out there. There's enough fake ass wannabe gurus out there. I don't have time. I have to rise up. I have to feel good about myself. I have to have self-worth. I have to know mind, body, and soul that I am an important, significant woman who matters and belongs. I have to know that it is good and safe and okay for me to live my dreams and for me to receive my desires. I have to know it. Because when I know it and I live it and I embody it, then every single woman is blessed when my video comes across her timeline. Whether she likes it, whether she follows me, whether she only watches it for a couple fucking seconds, law of attraction, all you need to do is focus for 17 seconds and your desire begins to materialize. 
I need to be in alignment, mind, body, and soul because 17 seconds of connection with me needs to be enough to bust a woman's heart chakra wide the fuck open and to wake her up to who she is and what she can do. I have so much privilege. There are so many things that I don't have to worry about. There are so many things that I don't have to be afraid of. I am so deeply connected to my ancestors. I am so deeply connected to my purpose. I am so deeply connected and deeply fucking protected. What the fuck do I look like being afraid? What the fuck do I look like letting a fear get between me and my goddamn goals? I am too protected. I am too anointed. I am too assigned. I am too fucking called. I don't have time for fear. I don't have time for shit. That is unnecessarily difficult. I don't have time for people who live in an eight of swords energy where they talk themselves out of their dreams and they talk themselves out of their goals. I don't have time for people that are one foot in and one foot out. I don't have time for people that are just pretending to be spiritual. I don't have time for people that are just pretending to be committed because the world does not have time for us to fucking pretend. I need to be about it. I need to be about it in every single aspect of life. And from this point forward, everybody in my life needs to be about it as well. Or they will be escorted out. I am done on all levels. I am done. We have systems of oppression to dismantle. We are called to leadership. We don't have time to play small. We don't have the privilege of playing small. I was born in this country. I was born in this time. I was born in this body. I was born with this mind. I was born with these gifts. I was born with this DNA. I was born with this creativity. I am so fucking blessed. I don't have time to be afraid that I'm not going to make it. I don't have time to be afraid that it might not work out for me. I don't have time. And the man that's going to be in my life, my soulmate and my fucking husband, when those energies come together, It needs to be like the power that is generated when atoms are split, bitch. It needs to be unfathomable fucking levels of power. I don't have time for the man who is too insecure to try or to tap into the power that's available to him. I don't have time. We don't have time. We're late. Do you know you have 30 minutes? 30, yes. And it's not that we're late because if we don't show up, then the world is going to end as we know it. It's that we're late. Because there's a woman whose life isn't going to change until she finds my page. There's a woman who is not going to change her life until she finds me. So I need to do everything in my power to get in front of her now. There are children 
who are not going to grow and expand to their fullest potential, creating emotionally fulfilled and purpose-driven lives until my programs are entering into their schools, until teachers who have been trained under me are walking into their fucking classrooms, until administrators who have worked with me are walking onto their school campuses. I don't have time every day that passes, every quarter that passes, every semester that passes. It's unsupportive generational curses that continue and continue and continue and continue. I am racing against the fucking clock because I care. I care about humanity. I care about my people. I care about the world. I care in such a deep way. And it's something that is in me. I have always cared in this way. It is something that is in my soul. It is something that is in my purpose. It is something that God has created me to do and be. I honor and I accept my destiny as a woman who was made to care about the people of the world and the woman who was given the power, the power of her mind, the power of her conviction to show up and create the change that she feels called to make in the motherfucking world. That is my destiny. I don't have time for anything else. Nothing gets to get in the way of this. Nothing gets to get in the way of this. Because when it's time for me to have kids, y'all think it's hard to get a hold of me now. When it's time for me to have kids, baby, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because as much as my purpose is to heal and share and support the world, my purpose to be a present, active mother and parent is nearly greater. It's neck and neck. Probably a little bit greater. My number one fucking priority. So we need to get this shit done now. We need to create the change that we have come here to create now. We need to get the ball rolling now. Because as I manifest the soulmate and I manifest the marriage and I manifest that connection and I manifest that family, the priorities are going to change once again. And my people are not going to go underserved. Because I didn't properly prioritize my time when they needed to be my number one priority. Are you feeling me? So that's where I am. That's how I feel. That's what I'm going through. You'll have to let me know in the comments if this resonates with you. If you feel the same, if you also feel called, if you're also feeling done and, you know, everything that I do is timeless. So I look forward to the day several years from now where women come to this video and they're like, oh my God, this is exactly what I'm going through. And maybe that day is tomorrow. (laughs) Maybe it's tomorrow and five years from now. Anyway, I'm rambling because I'm tired. Okay, I love you. I just really needed to get that out. Just a little vlog, video diary of where I am on my journey. I did the self-confident, the plus size self-confidence series. And then I didn't create any video updates because I kind of rebuked the idea of fat phobia. Because it's rooted in white supremacy. And I just was like, hell no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. You mean to tell me the only reason I don't like my body is because a white man five, six, seven hundred years ago said that it was ugly? Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Fat phobia, I released those chains. Immediately. Immediately. And now it's just kind of cleaning up and releasing some insecurities. 
and again, it's really healing, really healing, healing really quickly, healing really easily, elevating, ascending on every fucking level. Sometimes you fuck around and manifest and the choices and decisions that you make, it just like, it feels like it's just completely out of left field. I didn't know that I was going to be doing tarot readings again. I didn't, or, you know, for the public, because I obviously do readings for myself, but I didn't know that I was going to be doing tarot readings again. I didn't know that I was going to be doing this. I didn't know that I was going to be, you know, just dropping this guy completely. I did not know that any of that was going to happen. But it just feels right, like my right next obvious step. And that's all that we can do. And who knows, I might stop this recording and cry. And that's okay. But it still stands that I don't have time. We can feel the feelings and we can feel the emotions and just because we feel it doesn't mean... That we have to make different choices. Just because we feel sad. Just because we feel attached. Just because we feel emotionally connected to people. Or connected to people on a soul level. That doesn't. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. Not that it has no value. Not that it's not important. It can absolutely be beautiful. And there's so many things about my connection to the, connection to that man that are so beautiful. But compared to everything that needs to get done in this lifetime, you are looking at me describing basically a, my life's fucking work. And that's not even everything that I want to do. That's not even all the plans that I have. We didn't even get fucking specific. We're looking at shit that's going to take time. So we don't have time to waste. I don't have time to waste. My desire, my goal, my passion, my purpose, my destiny is to leave this world a better place than I found it. My legacy needs to be there was life on earth before Natalie Hughes and there was life on earth after Natalie Hughes. Now you tell me who won. When systems of oppression see me, they run. You tell me who won. When racist motherfuckers see me, they run. When people in positions of authority who abuse their power and hurt the most vulnerable populations of our world, when those motherfuckers see me, they run. I don't have time to go back and forth with the man about how I want him to treat me. There is change to be made. There are people to be healed. There are people to be uplifted, baby. We don't have time. We don't have time. I love you. I have compassion for you. I have understanding for you. I don't have time. I wish you well. I don't have time. We got lives to change. We got people to serve. One of my favorite lines is Jay-Z on a Rihanna song. He says, we headed to the top if you come and come on. (laughs) That's how I feel. I am headed to the top. If you're coming, come on. If you do not come on, you will be left. That's it. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. I will leave your ass in the name of my emotional fulfillment. I will leave your ass in the name of my purpose every single motherfucking time. Nobody is above getting cut off. Nobody. Nobody. And that's how I'm living. 
So I hope that it inspired you. I hope that it shifted something in you. I hope that it healed you. And I love you. And I will talk to you in the next girl chat or get ready with me. I need to wax my face. So there's probably going to be another one coming soon. Okay, love you. Bye.